Are you perfect? Am I perfect? Is the government perfect? Is a police officer perfect? Of course not. Nobody, I don't care. I don't care if you're a Buddhist monk. You are not perfect. Or a Catholic nun. You are not perfect. I'll tell you why. Because everyone goes through something. My pastor once said in Michigan, Jerry Piscopo, you have to go through something to see the light at the end of a tunnel. How can there be a light at the end of the tunnel if you don't go through nothing? If you go through absolute nothing, that tunnel is going to be dark and it's going to have no opening at the other side. Why? Because you won't need to go through it. But since we're human, since we're uh, new to this thing of being saved and we're imperfect people and frail people, we have to go through things in this day and age, to see the light at the end of a tunnel. Because we don't want to sit there in a tunnel that's dark and be scared. We need to know that, that God's on the other side waiting for us to come back home like that prodigal son. But you can be saved and still struggle. Now, that doesn't mean that since you can be saved and still struggle, that doesn't mean that every time that you go through something, you keep struggling, you keep struggling, you keep struggling. Eventually, you get to struggle over with and you put the past behind you again. But you can be saved and struggle. It's like uh, uh, my wife's uh, sister and her, her, her man. I'm saved, but they brought out a gun. They brought back up a lot of emotions. I struggled with it. So you can even struggle with your emotions and be saved. So yes, you can struggle and be saved. But it doesn't mean that, well, I'm saved, I can struggle, therefore, I got to go with this hussy over here and I got to have a little fun. No, don't deliberately sin and say that you're saved. Like somebody I know from uh, when I was in jail, when uh, a long time ago, as part of my testimony, I found God in jail. And uh, he, he loved God, he worshiped God, he went to church every Sunday and he praised him, he danced for God, but he was a fruitcake. Excuse my French, but I don't discriminate about nobody, but he was gay. Therefore, he thought he loved God, but was still gay, and you can't do that. So, don't deliberately sin like that and then try to worship God, but if you're struggling, if the devil's tempting you, if, you know, if he's tempting you, he's trying you, and things are going wrong, and God's testing you, and you slip and you fall. You get back up and try again. Get back on that horse and you kick it and try it again. But you can struggle and be saved. You can have temptations in your life and stuff like that and not do nothing about it in the wrong way. So you can struggle but be saved. But here's the thing. We need to, we need to once we realize we're sin, that we are tempted, being tried, being tested and are saved that we got to remove that we got to say now how can i eliminate that yes it's sin yes it's bad news and yes i'm still struggling with it and i'm saved but how can i get rid of that what can i do to basically uh that's what i'm looking for lord not really get rid of it because we need it but Stop it. I won't say need it. We don't need it. But get rid of it is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I was thinking about my work for a minute there because in about chili, about today when I was making the chili and stuff. So I thought about that. That's why I said that. But we need to get rid of it. Now, we still need temptation in our lives. Why? Because it only makes us stronger. So we do technically need it. And temptation makes us stronger. So we need that to strengthen our faith. If we were perfect people, just like I always tell you, and like I tell people, if I go to the, if I go to a doctor, the doctor asks me how I'm doing, I say, I'm absolute perfect. The first thing that doctor's going to do is say, well, then I'll see you next, next time. Walk out the door. If you're not sick, you don't need a doctor. If you're, if you're perfect, you don't need a savior. My pastor said, we're all sinners in need of a Savior. So you can't be perfect and need a Savior. 
it don't work out that way and you know things like that but we can struggle with temptations and we can struggle with anxiety and self-worth and depression and still be saved but while we're dealing with it we got to come up with solutions so that when it comes and happens again we can say i got you right there devil you shut up and you start doing what we discussed before what you discussed so can you be saved and struggle of course i gave you all the examples i can think of so that's it i just want to give you some food for thought and ask you can you be saved and struggle and i want you to think about the stuff that i said and think about it you know you can email me at communitycloud222 at gmail.com spelled c-o-m-m U-N-I-T-Y C-L-O-U-D 222 at gmail.com or call me and leave a voicemail at 1-302-448-8443 Again, it's 1-302-448-TGIF for Jesus does most definitely come first. Let's pray real quick. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you that, yes, Lord, we can struggle and still be saved, but we thank you, Lord, that you are working in us to take this, those temptations away. Take everything away that is not of you. The gate is once saying, Lord, if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to live right. I want to live safe. I want to be whole. So we thank you, Lord, that you're keeping us safe and that you are teaching us every day, Lord, to do what we need to do. I ask you, Lord, to bless everyone to sound of my voice that it not be what? Selfish. Not one of those, I want a 2020 car because I want it. Rather, I need a car to get to point A to point B to get to church, to get to work, to even if it's just to see a friend, go hang out, play games, or go have coffee with a friend. Whatever it is, if you need a car, Lord, you give it to them. You give it. You give them their heart's desires as long as it not be what selfish. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. I ask you to heal everyone at the sound of my voice, heal them from cancer, diabetes, and all those other diseases, and yes, Lord, even ones that contracted themselves, syphilis, herpes, gonorrhea, and AIDS, and HIV. Why? Because when you heal them from those uncurable diseases, Lord, that you can be lifted up, they'll praise you, and then I'll praise you as well, Lord. So I thank you for what you're doing. I give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Let's give the Lord a clap offering on that note. Thank you, Jesus for being you and being here and doing what you're doing in this ministry. So we thank you, we praise you, honor, honor you, Lord, that we can still be saved but still struggle. So we thank you, we praise you, honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, guys, that's it. It's a little food for thought. It's a 23-minute segment. Think about it again. Send me an email at communitycloud222 at gmail.com, spelled C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D-222 at gmail.com, and send me you what you think about that question. Also, call me at 1-302-448-8443. That's 1-302-448-TGIF. And tell me what you hear them saying as well. That way we can be perfectly... Uh, I lost my train of thought, Lord. I'm tired. Sorry. But uh, bless them with the sound of their voice. Heal them with the sound of their voice, Lord. That it, because when you heal them, Lord, it shows your, your power, your, your glory, and your majesty in that, Lord. When you uh, heal them, it show you show off, Lord. And you let them know who did what to them. So that that way they can come back to worship you, Lord. The Bible says, blessed is he that has seen and yet and still will have seen and believed, but blessed are those who have not yet seen, but still believe. So we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, Lord, and it's all in the majesty name of Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Sorry, guys, I'm a little tired today, because I wake up every day at 4 o'clock. In the morning, get to work by 5.30, sometimes 6. Tomorrow's going to be 9 o'clock, so thank the good Lord, even though my wife's going to drop me off at work before she goes at 5.30 a.m. Because I won't be able to walk home in all this bad weather. Thank the good Lord that I'm going to be there so I don't have to walk in this bad, cold weather. Well, that's it, guys. Let me do what I always do and I love doing it. This 
once again is TGIF reminding you to one, trust in the Lord in all your ways, two, lead not to your own understandings, and three, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Thank you and good night.